Gut, also. Okay, lovely. Okay, then. So, starting in standing, let's just bring some focus and attention to where we are this evening on our mats. Okay, so nice deep breaths. Maybe just placing your hands just over your tummy and really trying to encourage that breath all the way down to the base of your lungs. Feel your tummy rise with your breath in and fall with your breath out. If you want to close your eyes and just be with that breath for a moment, be my guest. And then when you're ready, open your eyes, but keep that breath going. Just relax your hands by your side. We're going to just gently start to take it into a roll down now. So peel down through the bones of your spine as you exhale. Now, as we haven't really done much movement yet, I don't want you to force this. So coming sort of halfway, hanging over your knees and then stacking back up to stand again. Breathing in at the top of that movement. Good stuff. Super simple, just repeat, it's okay, but really focusing in on every bone in your spine. Can you get that movement to occur at every single level? Intersegmental movement of the spine. And almost just letting the weight of your arms bring you over the front of your legs. And then you get to the top. You stack up and you go again. Really focusing on being mindful with your movement. So as hard as it is, any other thoughts that come into your head or any other distractions around you, just try to let them pass you by. And bringing your focus back to your breathing and the sensations in your body really visualizing that movement of your spine we've got two more so hopefully you're beginning to feel your body open up a little bit now although it is pretty cold so don't worry we've got a bit more stretching to do okay hang in a little bit longer in this next one so when you're there hanging over your legs, your knees are soft and you're going to bring a little bit more weight into the front of those feet. Keep the heels on the ground, but just relieve the pressure slightly on the heels. Good stuff, right? Bring that focus back to your breathing. Beautiful. Holding that position, we're just going to do a gentle alternate bend from one knee to the other. So you're just pushing one knee back and then the other knee back, just so you feel that lengthening a little bit more on one side and then on the other. And as we hang here, just start to bring your focus to your lower tummy. So drawing your tummy away from the floor, creating that tension around the um, pelvis, lower abdomen, a little bit more, just little presses into the backs of the knees. And then slowly stack back up to stand again. Good stuff. OK, we're going to make it a little bit more dynamic now and add our shoulders in. So you want to stand along the length of your mat. So we're going to take it from a roll down into a down dog stretch. So if you're not sure what that looks like, have a little look and then join in when you're ready. So super slow, we roll down through the bones of the spine, a little bit warmer now. And then if you need to bend your knees, so you can comfortably bring your hands onto the mat, walk your hands along the mat, but keep your hips lifted. And then we come into this inverted V position. We're gonna look towards the floor, or look towards the belly button. We're going to inhale at the bottom. Exhale. 
and then walk the hands back towards the feet, softening the knees to help, and then slowly roll up to stand. So roll down into our downward facing dog. Peel down through the spine. Maybe you're able to get your hands to the mat without bending the knees too much. You get a little bit of a stretch at the end. And you're aiming to get those heels as close to the mat as you can and those knees as straight as you can. But as I say, don't force it because we want this to happen naturally. And if you're not feeling warm enough, it won't happen. Breathe at the bottom and then come back again. So just keep repeating that. Good, really push away from your hands and draw your chin in towards your chest. Nice long neck, so shoulders, shoulder blades are gliding down through the spine. It is a real good opportunity to get some weight through your wrists and your shoulders. Lovely, Elaine, good. Nice slow roll downs, good work. You can do about three more. That's it, Helen, push back into those heels if you can. Beautiful. Well done. And remember, you're looking at the floor or back towards your belly button. Keep that breathing deep. Try and keep your mind on your movement. We've got two more. Make sure that your feet are hip distance apart. And really try and draw those ankles towards the mat. I know it's tough. If you're tight into your hamstrings or your calves, this is a really good one for you. Okay, we're going to hold this one. So get yourself into a, a comfortable down dog. <laughs> I don't know if that phrase actually comes together. So a down dog you feel happy to hold, okay? So you're looking towards your feet or towards the mat, just to lengthen the back of the leg, neck. And then we're going to come back into that alternate knee bend and heel press. So just as we did earlier, but now in our down dog, it's a deeper stretch. Feeling the back of the legs lengthen. Draw the tummy up towards the spine. If you need to at any point, bring your knees down, have a little rest, and then push back up again. Really think about the fibres along the back of the leg lengthening with every press of your heel. Try not to twist at the pelvis, keep the pelvis level. Resting if you need to, because it is a big one on the on the wrists. Heart rate's probably gone up a little bit as well. Brilliant. Okay, bring yourself back to that equal foot position. And then we're going to just do a little sway from side to side. So just let your hips move across the width of your mat. And as you do that, you kind of press a bit more into one leg. You feel the sides of the shoulders opening up, the sides of the back. Let me see how you're doing. That's it, yeah, just shake out if you need to and then join back in again. Remember the hips are lifted. Good stuff. Okay, one more, we're gonna come back into the middle. We're gonna take a deep, deep breath in. And as we exhale, we're just gonna try and push the direction towards the direction of the heels push away from the hands and see if we can straighten those knees and get those heels down towards the ground as best as you can three two and one just slowly bring yourself down onto your knees and we're just going to rest for a moment in our shell stretch just to let that blood come back up to our heads
So a little bit of a slower start to the class this evening, um, but really nice to focus on our mobility. So bringing ourselves back into our box position now. Let's see if we can continue to challenge these shoulders. So find yourself in that nice neutral spine. You're looking down at the mat, back of the head is lifted, shoulders gliding down in towards the back pockets and the tailbone is nice and long. We're still lifting the lower tummy away from the floor. And we're gonna take our hand across to the opposite shoulder and give it a little bit of a tap without twisting. We come back to the center and we come into a little press from there. So we lower the chest down, keeping the tail long, and then we push back up. We take it across to the opposite side. So right hand to left shoulder or vice versa, come down, bend at the elbows, elbows going in a diagonal line towards the back of the mat, and we come back up again. So we've worked on our press quite a lot, but remember you can make it harder by bringing your chest forwards over your fingertips, or you can make it slightly easier by taking your hips back towards your heels. So the um, length and size of your box is really key here. But what I want everyone to focus on is that position of the tailbone. So as we lower the chest down towards the mat, we don't wanna see the bum coming up in the air. We wanna really tuck that tailbone underneath and use that drawing in of the tummy to help with that, okay? And it's really down to you how low you go. Have a little rest if you need to shake out those wrists. Looking good, Jill. We press and we tap and we've got that tray of drinks resting on the back of our shoulders when we tap. So we're trying not to spill them. Good work, Ivana. Sue, I've lost you. I can just see you bobbing up and down. Well done. Lovely. Well done. Well done, everyone. Really nice. Okay, you're going to do four more incorporating two taps to each shoulder. I'm hoping that you're starting to feel that burn now building up in the arms. The, the floor is getting a little bit harder to press away. Don't lose that pelvic position. Keep that tail tucked underneath. I haven't quite done with these press ups yet, I'm sorry. I don't wanna give you false hope that we're coming to the end. Okay, we're going to lose the shoulder taps now. We're going to come halfway down with the press up. Then we're going to push up, but not all the way. Come back halfway and then push all the way back up again. So we come down half, up three quarter, down half, all the way up. It's a little bit of pulse in the middle, almost to trick your body into thinking, oh, we've finished. Not quite, go back down again, just increases that time under tension that your muscles are working and that in turn will increase the strength and their ability to cope with various demands. So we come down, we come halfway up, down and up again. Now if you want to go a bit deeper, you can, you could go all the way down, then come halfway up, go all the way down and come all the way back up again. I think I can do that about once. So, <laughs> Oh, we've got jumpers coming off. So we have the intended effects of this exercise, get you warm now. Watch your head doesn't hang down. Keep the back of the neck lifted, that's it, Sue. So imagine a piece of string, just keeping your head lifted, even as you lower down. So the movement comes from your chest not your nose. Great work guys. I want you to do about three or four more of those. I'm going to join in with you because I think these are good for all the wrong reasons. You're breathing still. Is your tail tucked underneath? Really feel that shaking in your arms as you come up halfway. Okay, final one. Amazing work, you did loads more than me. That was great. Sit back into your shoulders, sorry, into your hips. Give your shoulders a stretch. While you're there, just get let those wrists have a little bit of a move from side to side. We're gonna take it into that stretch 
not doing this in a while. So just walk your hands across to the left and push your hips to the right. Just to feel that on the underside of that right arm, really opening out the lats. And then swap sides. So you're gonna try and bring your hands wider than your mat. Good stuff, okay, coming down onto the mat now, propping up on the forearms if you would. we we'll go for a little bit of plank stuff. I brought something back in that we did a couple of weeks ago. Um, see if you remember it and see how you feel about it. But to begin with, we just set up on our fronts, okay? So the back of the head is lifted, shoulders are down, and we tuck the tailbone underneath. And as the tail tucks underneath, the tummy floats away from the mat. We pause at the top. And then we lower down. Okay. We know these. We're so good at them. Head, shoulders, tailbone, scooping underneath. And we lift. You want that flat back. That tray of drinks is back and it's resting on the back of your pelvis. And if you want to, Draw your tummy to your spine or engage your pelvic floor as you lift and hold. You should really feel a quiver in your tummy if you're doing that well. Don't need to come too high. You don't need to hold for too long. If you're really working to shorten the pelvis towards the ribcage, yeah, the pelvis towards the ribcage or the ribcage towards the pelvis, you're getting those abdominal muscles engaged and they will quiver. Okay, if you want to add that, Legs straightening you can, so as you lift the hips, we squeeze the front of the thighs and the knees come off the mat, we take it into that full forearm plank. Again, just lifting and lowering to begin with. If that option feels too much, just stick with the knees. Most importantly, your spine should be long, so if you're feeling any pressure in your lower back, or it feels like it's dipping, stick on the knees and really work on that tucking of your tailbone underneath. That's where this comes from. It's that shortening at the front, shortening here and here, so that we can lengthen here. Good work, everyone. Okay, you can stay here. If you remember our first class back in New Year's Eve, after New Year's Eve, we added a little bit of a twist, didn't we? So what that looks like is from the knees, we come up into the plank, we take one arm and we rotate it up, chest opener. We come back to the side and we rotate up here, okay? There's your first option on the knees. Second option, we come all the way onto toes and we twist so that we're on the inside of one foot, the outside of the other. Twist to the second side, keep those hips lifted, back to the center and come down. Or if you want to, just keep twisting, just keep lifting, just keep going. You've got it. Now we're feeling warm. That frost outside won't stop us. Ooh. Keep going. I think my screen's got a bit funny. Oh, I'm back. Lovely. You look great. I just looked a bit strange then. Good stuff. Okay, we're going to take it onto one side now and we're going to hold that side plank. So you're resting on your knees with your arm lifted or on your feet with your arm lifted. Bring your hip down if you need to. Yeah, if, if the knees are too hard, just rest on your, on your hip or on your knees or on your feet. Keep holding. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good stuff. Down we go. And we swap sides. I'm going to turn away from you, not being rude. You could be here. This is tough. You could be here or you could be here. Keep holding, try and lift the underside of your ribs away from the mat as much as you can with all options. Five, four, three, two, and one. Woo! 
down we come. Should we have another rest? Resting on your tummies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good work. That's really hard. We don't do a lot of side planks. Um, maybe 2023 is the year of the side plank. Okay, let me see what else I have planned. Good stuff, we've got 10 minutes left. So we're gonna do a bit of work on the tummy and then we'll come onto our backs, okay? So have a little look at what we're doing and then you can set yourself up. So lying flat along your mat, on your front heads, resting on your hands, all about the hips and the hamstrings to begin with. So we have a nice long spine. We tuck the tail underneath, we squeeze the back of the hip and we float the leg up, keeping the knee locked out. We lower down and we repeat that on the opposite side. Nice and simple to begin with. So just long leg lifts coming into our swimming exercise. So gliding down the pool in slow motion with long legs. Squeezing the hip as you lift up and working hard to keep the tail tucked underneath. Fairly straightforward, keep it going. Nice work, everyone. Beautiful, okay. We're gonna add a little bit of hamstrings now. Really want you to focus on the control around your pelvis. So we float the leg off the mat. The front of the knee is lifted. We then bend the heel towards the bottom without letting that knee position change. So that will feel like a stretch across the front of the thigh. We then straighten that leg out slowly, 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 and then extend the knee and then lower down from the hip. So once again, lift the hip, foot floats up, bend the knee, keeping the knee lifted. Take it to the point where you can't bend the knee anymore. Then lengthen the knee slowly, slowly, slowly. Lock the knee out and lower the leg down. So this is our one leg kick. Now what you should feel is the hamstring muscles shortening to draw the heel towards the bottom and the quadricep muscles lengthening to allow that to happen. And if you've got tightness in the front of your hip, that's gonna be quite tricky. So if you're spending a lot of time sitting at the moment, for whatever reason, this is a really important one for you to do. So imagine that when your knee is lifted off the mat, it's resting on a small ball. So you can't press it back down towards the floor. What you will notice happens is that if you lower your knee, you can really easily bring your heel towards your bottom. But by keeping that knee lifted, you'll feel that tension and that lengthening across the front of the thigh happening. Good, toes are pointed. Beautiful. Okay, so not too taxing from a strength point of view, working a bit on elongating the muscles and controlling and coordinating the muscle activity as well. So we're gonna add our upper back as well, if you want to. If the upper back feels like it's too much, just stick with the legs. So you've got two options for the upper back. Either the head lifts on its own or the head and the arms lift. So head on its own, we float the leg off the mat, back of the head lift, stay looking down, holding that lift with the back of the head, heel towards the bottom, straightening the leg out, locking the knee and then lowering down. Second side, lift, close, lengthen and lower. Adding the hands to that, the hands stay pressed at the back of the forehead as the head lifts and lowering, okay? Now remember, this is all about maintaining that long spine. So if you're feeling your back is shortening and it's uncomfortable, then don't lift quite so high because we've got a lot of kind of contraction in the back of the body there as we're closing down. Looking good, everyone. Well done. Let's go for two more on each side. Good 
Watch those shoulders, nice long necks, shoulders gliding down away from the ears. You've got it, one more on each. Beautiful, nice precision, lovely. Good stuff, and then resting there, I would encourage you just to push back into your heels once more, take it into your shelf stretch, just to do that opposite movement. Okay. We have reached the end. We're going to come back to that um, little round of exercises for our abdominal strength. So if we remember, we're lying on our backs in our rest position. Let me show you what we did last week if you've managed to forget. If you were with me on Thursday, you are not, you've got no excuse, okay? So we start with our scissors exercise. So level one, neutral pelvis is found and we float the leg up into tabletop and we lower down and then we float the other leg into tabletop and we lower down. So that's the first option for the first exercise. Option two is to sit in the leg. So as one leg lifts, the other lowers, drawing the tummy into the spine to stop the back from arching. So we do six on each leg. First exercise. Some of you already started, that's fine. Second exercise, we're in a double tabletop and we slowly extend one foot at a time into the middle of the room. Okay, second option on that is to switch the legs midway. Okay, third exercise, interlace the fingers and we take it into our abdo prep. Okay, option to make it a bit easier, come out of double tabletop. Three exercises, scissors, single tabletop, slow or fast. Leg stretch in a double tabletop, slow or fast. Abdo prep with or without your double tabletop. 12 repetitions. You come to the end of that, you hug your knees, you reframe your mind, and when you're ready, you go again. Back into it, tabletops. Leg stretches. And abdo preps. I'm gonna come and see how you're doing. And I'm gonna do a round myself. We'll do three rounds in total. Hopefully we've got enough time. We've got eight and a half minutes until the meeting finishes. Good, so those double tabletops, make sure your heels are in line with your knees, not too high, that's much better, well done. I think most of you are probably on your ab day preps now for your first round, looking good. Remember that this is gonna feel tough because we're layering lots of exercises on top of one another, focusing on that same muscle group. But this is where we get stronger, by pushing a little bit harder, getting into that feeling of fatigue, and then continuously loading up the muscles. Well done, I think people are coming on to their second round now. So remember that ab day prep, shortening the rib cage down to the pelvis. These looking really good, keep them slow, there is no rush. Well, there is a bit of a rush because <laughs> I'll lose you at the end. You're doing really well. Okay, I'm going to join in with you. So if anybody needs a little prompt on any of the exercises, you can just have a little check in on the screen. But it absolutely looks like you've got this covered. So well done. And just remember, remind yourself, this is all about the control that your abdominal wall gives to your lower pelvis and um, lower spine and pelvis. So if you're finding that your back is arching away from the mat with the weight and the movement of your legs, you need to work harder to gently flatten the curve of your spine. Remember, not completely. There's a sponge in the middle of your back, yeah? And we're just pressing down on it ever so gently so that the water trickles out of the sponge. But we don't want to dry that, wring that sponge out all the way with a little bit of water left in it. Squeezing the thighs at the end of that single leg stretch just to get a little bit of leg work as well because it isn't just about the abs and the back, this. Good, and then remembering 
that rib cage is what drives our head and shoulders off the mat. The neck stays fairly settled. The arms are just supporting the head. They're not pulling them off the floor. Just a little bit of a lift and lower. Breathe out as you come up in as you go down. Good, so probably coming up near to finishing your second round. So when you have, give your knees a hug and then set yourself up for your final round. So I'm gonna do one round, I'm gonna count <laughs> my own repetitions because I couldn't count and talk there. And then hopefully we all kind of come towards the end at around the same time. Keep it going. Remember, exhaling always with the effort if you can coordinate it. If not, don't worry, just make sure you're not holding your breath. Really should be feeling those abs now. If you're not, work harder. Do another round, I dare you, I challenge you. When you get to the end, give your knees a hug. And that's me done. Okay, you keep going though if you need to, if you're still working through that final round, that's absolutely fine. Hug of the knees or take it into a full body stretch. After all of that ab work, that feels quite nice as well. Enjoy those last few repetitions whilst you're there. Keep it going. Well done. Some of you may have even done a few more. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, most of us are stretching. I'm just gonna give you another minute just for anybody else to finish. Don't rush though. So if you are having a stretch, I want you just to bring your focus back to your breathing. Amazing. So everybody that I can see appears to have finished. So let's all just have a collective pause just to breathe. And you can do that in a knee hug or just lying on, on your mat or sitting. Bring your awareness back to your tummy. Take that breath all the way down to the bottom of your lungs. You'll feel those tummy muscles tomorrow, I'm sure. Great stuff. Now, if you want to stay there and just breathe it out a little bit more, you can do. Otherwise, please come and join me to say goodbye. <laughs>